Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and in today's video I'm going to look into the idea of can I import a guitar from AliExpress and bring it up to the standard of some of my other beautiful musical instruments? For those of you that have followed my channel for a while, you've seen some guitars in the background. I have a lot of very nice guitars. I have too many very nice guitars. We've got some Fender Custom Shop stuff here, and Mayonnaise guitars, Gibson guitars, Ormsby guitars, Vigier guitars, I've too many nice guitars in this studio and I have more nice guitars in the house very very lucky in my career I have a lot of nice instruments but I hate the idea that music ends up becoming something that only those with money are able to do I hate the idea that you convince yourself that you need an incredibly expensive instrument in order to be able to make good music and of course that isn't the case you need a good quality instrument but that good quality instrument doesn't necessarily have to be expensive it's entirely possible that you can get yourself a good quality instrument for a very, very low price. But what if you're obsessed with the idea of brands? Well, then you can get into the shady world of importing Chinese knockoff guitars. And that's what we're doing today. So I have been scouring AliExpress looking for something that I thought would be an interesting guitar for a project. I could bring the guitar in see how bad the quality was, but see if I could upgrade it, see if I could improve the quality with general fretwork and pickups and tuners and all that, and see if it was worth it. See if I could turn a £200 guitar into something more akin to some of my, like, £3,000 guitars. Um, the likelihood of that felt low, but would there be enough of a difference between the guitars to really justify such an incredible price difference? Well, it's been a saga. Let's get into it. So, looking through AliExpress, the first thing that I... Well, I knew I was going to get this anyway, was going to be a Zach Wilde, Gibson, Les Paul, the bullseye. Uh, and the reason for that is it's one of the most counterfeited guitars, but also I'm a huge Zach Wilde fan, so sue me. Don't sue me, Gibson. <laughs> um, I looked and I looked and I looked, and the, the, the problem with AliExpress is you don't have one builder. You have multiple factories, and they all tend to use the same pictures. You just essentially have to look at the star ratings and look at somebody that has a lot of good feedback and just hope for the best. I knew that whatever I ordered, I was going to spray paint the word fake on the back because whatever happens to this guitar, if I die tomorrow, I want to make sure that if somebody takes this guitar, they'd never be able to pass it off as the genuine article because, of course, it isn't. Um, but actually what I ended up doing was ordering a guitar that wasn't the same colour as Zach's original. So Zach's signature model had a slight cream colour to the to the white. I just went with a straight white. So it's a white and black bullseye Les Paul. I ordered the guitar and I waited. And I waited. And I waited. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. Um, in that time I thought, well... It kind of would be fun to get a second guitar from AliExpress and then I could compare the work of two builders and see if there was a, a big disparity in quality between builders, see how important it was that you went with the right shop. So I did some shopping around and I ended up ordering myself a black Les Paul that had the Black Label Society logo on it. I thought it would make for a nice prop to hang on the wall here while I was talking about this guitar. Um, it kind of made sense at the time. <clears throat> That was a saga in its own right. Uh, the seller didn't respond to any of my messages. So here is the first warning sign of ordering a guitar on AliExpress. AliExpress's customer service is terrible. Absolutely terrible. When the seller hadn't responded to any of my messages for weeks and I had filed to um, have the guitar cancelled and refunded, AliExpress's system there is they give the seller two days, I think it was two days, to respond to your message. And the seller gets to decide whether or not they want to cancel the order. They can refuse to cancel the order. I'm not sure how that works, but such is life. What happened is the seller wasn't responding to any of my messages. So funnily enough, when AliExpress contacted him, he didn't respond to their messages either. So the two days went by and I should just get a refund, right? Well, that didn't happen. The two days went by and then the clock just started again and he had another two days to respond. Uh, so I could see what path that was going down. Uh, I had to file a dispute with PayPal on that one. And luckily... PayPal had my back, and I got my money back on that one. Um, so, big warning sign there already. I then ordered another version of that guitar from a different seller who was responsive to messages. So if you do decide to be stupid like me and do this, make sure sellers respond to messages. It's kind of useful. Do it before they make the guitar. Do it before you place an order. Make sure that they talk to you. Uh, so I ordered the guitar, and again, I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And eventually... We had guitars. We had 
guitar. So far, I have I have one guitar. So the uh, Black Label Society Les Paul did show up. The Bullseye was a little bit more of a problem. The problem I had with that is that, again, AliExpress, the sellers have X amount of time. I think it's 14 days to ship you your product. And if they don't ship it within that time, AliExpress cancels the order and refunds you. Well, it was getting to the end of that 14-day period, and the guy still hadn't shipped the guitar. So what he did, rather than talking to me about it, he just marked the guitar as shipped, even though it hadn't shipped, so he had more time to send it. Because once you've purchased the thing and they've marked it as shipped, it then has, I think, 90 days to show up to you before you can then file a dispute and try and get your money back. So he had essentially bought himself more time. Fortunately, he was actually very responsive to messages. He was updating me and he did send me pictures from the factory. Um, he assured me the guitar was almost done. In fact, he sent me a picture and here it is. I'm sure, well, I hope you can see the problem that I saw with this. So as soon as he sent me this, I went, whoa, 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 don't send me that. There's something not right there. Look at the bridge pickup route. That's way, way, way off center of where the bullseye is. That bullseye logo should be centered around that pickup and it's not, it's been badly laid on the guitar. Um, don't send me that. <laughs> so he said, well, don't worry, I made two of them. Uh, let me check the other one. The other one should be better. He sent me a picture of that one. It was a little bit better, but not a whole lot better. But you know what? Again, I'm not trying to pass this guitar off for the genuine article. I said, you know what? Fine, just send it. I'm just, I'll put it in the video anyway, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so he did send that guitar, and again, I waited, and I waited, and I waited until today. So um, today is the day. Today, the postman came to the door. Awesome. Um, but he had a letter for me, unfortunately. And the letter was from the UK Border Force telling me that they have detained goods addressed to me for investigation. Uh, they're going to be destroying that guitar. So I will not be receiving that guitar, which is, again, the second warning sign of dealing with stuff on AliExpress. If you buy counterfeit goods, this is something that you can reasonably expect to happen. It's entirely possible that the illegal goods that you have, and I've talked about this on the Guitar Souls podcast a lot over the years, the goods that you have are illegal. They should not exist. And if the authorities get their hands on them, they are obligated to destroy them. And then where does that leave you? For me, I'm making a YouTube video. So I've I don't care about this guitar. It's probably going to end up in the bin anyway. Um, <laughs> but if you are investing your savings into a guitar where this could happen and you may not get your money back, I'll see what happens on this one. I'll let you know what happens. But um, at this stage, that's 240-ish pounds that I might not see again. Um, hopefully, again, PayPal will have my back. We will see. Obviously, I will let you know. Uh, but yeah, so that guitar didn't show up and isn't going to show up. Um, so fun times, fun times on that one. And I, you know, do I feel bad for the seller? Because he's not, he shouldn't be getting his money. He did make the product and he did send me the product, but I didn't receive the product. Well, that's the nature of doing business in copyright infringing areas, right? You don't have the right to infringe on the copyright of others and then say, well, but hang on a minute, I did the work still, so I still expect to be paid. Like, work in legitimate business it really is as, as simple as that isn't it like you want to operate outside of the law you can be a drug dealer you can't complain to somebody when the police seize your drugs that's just not how that works so um i hopefully will get my money back on that one but the other guitar it did show up and i'm going to pick it up here um <laughs> let's have a look at that headstock so that looks like legitimate um, not a bad Gibson knockoff headstock. An expert, you know, Trogli is going to spot this and go, that's not legit. <laughs> um, but if you're not a connoisseur of Gibson, it has the look. You could hang this on a wall. Um, let's look at the body. <laughs> so immediately that graphic is not centered again. It's like they're making these with their eyes completely closed because that is not centered. Um, I actually hate the way that logo looks, but such is life. Um, when you zoom in on close here, you'll notice that the uh, resolution of that graphic is also very, very low. Uh, they've also put a matte finish on it. If you look at Zach's version of this guitar, it had a gloss finish on it, so that's not right. There's also some scratches. Uh, those are actually underneath the finish. Uh, on the graphic so nothing that can be done about those unfortunately again low quality uh, when i zoom around the guitar you can see that the binding is not good the paintwork coming up to the edge of the binding is not great 
but it is what it is you just kind of have to deal with it when i spin it over and look at the back of it the control plate uh for both the selector switch and the pots doesn't really fit in the hole all that well they are a little bit rough around the edges again the binding graphic is poor the paint is poor it does have a nice matte finish on it though it's not completely smooth there's definitely some you know bubbling on it um but what do you expect for 200 pounds i said it was supposed to be gloss the back of the neck is matte i do i did want a matte back on the neck to be fair the back of the neck does feel nice and the thing to note about this is actually if i grab the neck like this and wrap my fingers around the edges of all of these frets are actually pretty smooth they're not perfect but you're not going to cut your fingers on them and i have seen stories of that happening with some of these knockoff guitars uh, that's the only compliment I can give the fretwork because the fretwork is terrible. I'll cut over to a clip in a second. This guitar is functionally an ornament at this stage. You can't play it. It's completely unplayable because it's just buzz central. Uh, there are high spots on the frets all over the place. There may very well be some neck warping on this guitar. Uh, I'll find out when I take it to my tech and I'll, of course we'll update you on that. Hopefully we make it playable. The plan was that I was going to do um, like an Ozzy Osbourne cover on the guitar like this and then the same cover with the upgraded parts and all the fretwork done on it but I can't record like this because this guitar is completely unplayable. So again that's a huge warning sign, something you need to consider. If you're going to go this route, you have to understand that the guitar that you receive may be completely unplayable and may require a lot of time, a lot of experience, and a lot of money in order to make it playable. This, no good. As I say, headstock, not the worst thing in the world. The knockoff Grover tuners are really knockoff. They have white on them, which isn't... I mean, if I hold up legitimate Grover tuners, that's not the case. They should just be gold. Um, really... They're kind of like, they feel loose and they don't feel like they do a lot when you tune with them. Um, definitely not the best. The pickups aren't the best. We'll have a look at that um, <laughs> in a second. So, um, yeah, here we go. So let's take a look at it. Um, here it is. Uh, bridge pickup works. Intonation's not great. Neck pickup works. does the job um <laughs> there's not enough output on these pickups to get those pinch harmonics screaming um but technically it works and you could i guess <laughs> Could, you could riff on it uh, the problem with this guitar comes in with the fret work especially when you're playing leads right so if i play let's put a clean tone on really accentuate that So we can bend a minor third there no problem but a tone here not a chance i wasn't joking guys completely unplayable it's it's just absolutely no good um i'm going to take this up to my tech now leave it with him as long as he needs it for and then we will um hopefully get his thoughts on this <laughs> and then we'll come back and we'll see if it's any better with the upgraded pickups the upgraded tuners and the fret work and then we'll get some samples so here we go so here i am at my techs how's it gone <laughs> fantastic uh yeah, apart from the frets, it's pretty good. To How bad were the frets? The frets were terrible, absolutely <laughs> terrible. Uh, just in terms of none of them were seated. I had to sit and glue down the NJ pretty much every single fret. Um, <laughs> just well, just to make sure they weren't sure. going to go anywhere afterwards. But it was literally like the one that when you came in was really high. 
it was so, I mean, it was literally sitting. It just needed pushed in, essentially, you know, yeah. it just hadn't been kind of done so well. But, I mean, apart from that, there's lots of kind of obvious uh, the things. I mean, the way it hasn't got any threat nibs, obviously, but the, this is kind of comedy. If you'll notice, that's got a couple of different screws on there. But this screw actually goes right across the cavity <laughs> and goes into the back of the neck um, because there isn't anything... They used to do the three screw catch. things and yeah. people were clicking on that they, or they need to do it two screws, but the problem is there isn't actually anything there to screw it to. Right. So there's like a little bit of hardened paint and then the screw just goes <laughs> through it and sticks into the back of the neck. How uh, How's the neck on it? The neck's a lot better than I, I would have thought at first. You know, I mean, it plays fine. It really does, you know. It plays it plays like a guitar. It's got a kind of good little action. It's, um, it was genuinely the, it seems to have a two way truss rod in it, which was okay. kind of confusing <laughs> just from the point of view they don't normally go that, that way, but it certainly seemed to work um, going the opposite way to straighten it up. So. Shame about that graphic being so off centred though. Well, it's off centred then a little bit. If they'd even just uh, printed it slightly better, yeah. you know, kind of a thing. Going, yeah, it's like the know. skull is low res, but. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the rest of it's like super it's high res and then the thing. Uh, what were the pickups in it? Garbage, I assume? The, what were they, sorry? Yeah. I mean, just literally fake EMGs. They're in the box over there just now. No obvious, I mean, literally a wire coming out the back. So, so like, not, <laughs> not like a normal EMG. Funnily enough, in this cavity, I'll send you a picture of it later, there's a little bit of masking tape with Chinese writing on it. So it's kind of, you go, yeah, that's definitely one of the Chinese ones. Eh? <laughs> they weren't trying to hide it too much. Yeah. Um, obviously, because the EMGs come with all the you know all the gubbins yeah. essentially we don't have to worry about any of that it's still the same switch that was in it you know yeah. um, and you'd expect it to uh to sound just like a guitar that has amgs pretty in it, much that. exactly yeah i mean that's the thing you know and it should stay in tune with those grovers on it well uh, yeah it should do it and that obviously is a bit kind of a rubbish you know maybe up it's the other the one thing you'd maybe upgrade on it just as a it's that, it's that old problem of where do you stop the reality is it plays fine now it works as a guitar you yeah. know everything's good whereas everything's a little bit kind of a you know the the quality of the bridge and, the, and stuff like that, so all of that will be even just the colour of the golds, very, yeah, yeah, very kind very of pale, like, yeah, yeah. What the, you know, it's kind of weird looking. Funnily enough, the Grovers actually, I don't know if you tried them before, you had brought it in. Oh, they were, they were horrifying, yeah, they, they were, were scary. They felt loose. Like there was dirt in them, yeah. you know, kind of crunchy, and yeah, but oh, yeah, yeah, but sweet. I mean, apart from that, it's genuinely, yeah, well, thank you very much for that. At all. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would, <laughs> but the reality is, once you kind of get close to them. There's a million things that tell you it's not a real one. You know, yeah. they're getting better at it, but the reality is it's still a million. It's it's literally not even on the quality of you know, Epiphone, really. It's kind of like an Epiphone where they haven't really bothered to finish it well. Sure. You know what I mean? It's that kind of a quality. So again, the same as an Epiphone, if you upgrade all the bits. Well, you know what I mean? It's... And the last and ultimate question, would you buy one? Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, that's, that's me. I think the reality is even for kids going out to kind of buy one, I'd rather buy an Epiphone because you're just not getting involved in all the the problems, you know. Essentially, if you ever try and sell it, it's always going to be one of those ones where people go, oh no, you know. Even if it does play good, to say this one actually plays good now, but but, they, but you can do that with an Epiphone as well, you know. And as I say, the reality is they'll come out with a little bit more attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll still have cheap tuners in them, but they wouldn't feel like they're full of sand. You know, it's literally <laughs> that kind they of... They were bad. Yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. is when you, you kind of go, oh, yeah, the little details are just yeah. a bit, a bit kind of weird on them. Sweet. And we're back. So Davey wasn't lying there. This guitar has actually come out great. It is extremely playable now. Um, it, it plays fantastically, to be fair. <laughs> but to be fair, again, if you were to give any guitar to a very good tech, and Davey is a very good tech, you would expect them to be able to turn it into something decent for a price. So you're probably looking at about £150 tops um, if you wanted to take something like this and make it really, really playable from a, a great tech. We didn't quite go that far with it. There were a few things that probably could or should have been done. Like, we didn't replace the nut on the guitar. Um, and that's definitely still a weak point. The nut is very poorly cut, so when you're tuning, it does feel like the string gets caught in the nut. You'll tune and nothing will really happen. Then suddenly the string will slide through the nut. Um, and the D string is a little bit buzzy. Um, just nature again of the poorly cut nut. It's it's too it's sitting a little bit low in the in the nut. But aside from that, um, it's it's really nice and playable. It is genuinely really nice and playable. 
Before I give you the playing samples of it, though, I just want to say, um, do the kind of conclusion type thing with this. Is it worth it to buy something like this? For me, the answer is an easy no. Um, the sheer amount of stress that went into actually getting it, the saga to get this guitar in my hands, and the chances that what could show up would be subpar. And it is subpar. You know, that graphic is terrible. Really, really badly done. Um, really badly done. Like, I wouldn't even be comfortable showing this to a Black Label Society fan. It's just really badly done. Look, It just looks cheap. It looks fake. Um, but aside from that, you know, the, the quality of the instrument, the amount of money that you would need to put into the instrument in order to turn it into something decent, I'm looking at £250 for pickups and machine heads, and then an additional 100 and something pounds uh, with tech work for fret work and things on the instrument and the replacement parts being put in. You're talking about, uh, you know, a £200 guitar or £220-ish pound guitar, plus the parts, you're getting close to 500 with the tech work. You're over 500, um, getting into the 600 territory, and you probably still have other things you want to do. Like I say, replacing that nut, which is going to push you into maybe considering just buying a Gibson Les Paul Studio. <laughs> I know, sure, if you buy a Gibson Les Paul Studio, it's not going to have the AMGs in there, but you can upgrade to those over time. The thing with this instrument is it has no value, no resale value whatsoever. I can't sell this. In fact, I shouldn't really own this. I can't legally sell this. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a counterfeit and trading this, selling this would be trading in counterfeits, which is against the law. Um, so it's just, I'm just very much of the opinion that it's not worth it. It's totally, totally not worth it. Um, <laughs> this video in so far has cost me like 600 pounds to make. Um, and for what? I've got nothing at the end of it. I'll probably make £20 in ad revenue from the video. Um, but it's more of a, a warning for you guys. Don't consider going through what I've gone through here because, again, it's just not going to be worth it, no matter how much money you put in. This is a cool guitar, apart from that graphic. If that graphic wasn't there, I'd probably like this guitar a lot more. Um, but it's I'm telling you guys, just isn't worth it. So, right, I'm going to cut on over and give you some samples of it so you can hear what this instrument sounds like. I'm not going to lie, sounds good. You'd expect it to sound good. It's got EMGs in it. And as we all know, if you have a guitar and you stick EMGs in it, it's going to sound like a guitar with EMGs in it. So um, let's take a look. So first up, let's check that bridge pickup out. Here we uh, have some Black Label riffs. <laughs> Some super terrorizer. Nice. Yeah, it's got what you would expect. I do have it in drop. <laughs> Which is where Zach would have had it in a lot of those early Black Label tunes. Um, it totally does the job. That bridge pickup is nice. And uh, we're there with bending now. So. It's bendable now. You can play those classics. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's, um, the, the neck pickup does its job. Well. 
plays like a, you know, not bad Les Paul. Middle pickup position. <laughs> Um, and if I put on a clean tone, <clears throat> not that you're getting a guitar like this for a clean tone. So don't do it guys <laughs> what i would recommend doing is if you want to be like these awesome people and support the channel for all these invest i can make videos like this and spend all this money on instruments which aren't useful to me because you support the channel i'm doing this so you don't have to i'm doing this so you don't accidentally do it i'm doing it so you don't think that this is a good, is a good idea and waste your own money instead i'll waste your money for you uh, yeah, so support the channel on Patreon is the best way to keep these videos happening. You can get access to weekly guided practice routines, weekly guided ear training sessions, or just download hundreds and hundreds of transcriptions. If that doesn't suit, check out one of the many books that I have available on Amazon. Uh, in fact, let me grab one. Here's weekly, uh, sorry, guided practice routines for guitar foundation level. Go and grab yourself a copy on Amazon now and support the channel. Don't buy guitars off of AliExpress. It's a bad idea. Much love, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you for another video soon. Laters.